Hey guys, I'm Avish. This is the 12th video of .NET MAUI with Syncfusion control series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the last session, we focused on understanding the data grid component we, and we explored the real-time use cases of the data grid control and we learned how to connect employee data to the data grid and we filtered the data using the data grids user search filter bar control. We explored circumstances and the ideal situation to choose the appropriate control, learned about the differences between list view and data grid control. I recommend all of you to review the previous sessions before proceeding. In this session, we will focus on defining the custom column types and sizing, allowing for highly customizable and visually appealing layouts. We'll also focus on grouping of items allowing users to organize and navigate content more efficiently. We'll also learn how to sort items in data grid. Please note that we have already covered filtering of items in the previous session. We'll look into stacked header, freeze panes of grid to freeze the panes while we scroll the details. Data grid provides extensive styling and conditional styling of the rows and columns. We'll investigate these features as well. If time permits, we will try to cover data editing real-time updates and exporting of data using data grid component. Let's now switch to the coding session and get going. In the previous session, we have added data grid NuGet package and created the employee grid.xaml file. We have reused the, the model employee info and extended the properties to add gender, joining date, phone and country. We have also reused the employee layout view model, which was used earlier to bind the list view. With these changes, we have binded the employee info to the data grid with auto-generated column options. Now, if you look at the emulator and see the output, the experience years column header is off due to certain size limitations. Data grid provides multiple options for auto-generated columns. Let's say we want to adjust the columns for some use case and we can do it by using the existing column width mode property which is now currently set to fit by cell. Let me delete it and show you the other options which are auto, fill, fit by cell, fit by header, last column fill and none. Now let me set it to auto and save it. Let me switch to the emulator. Now look at that the output is perfectly fit and the header is not off base. Now let me switch back to fit by cell now. Now if you want to control the column sizing with a custom property, we can still do that. This is not mandatory or achieve. However, it is good to know that data grid supports custom data grid column sizer property. Let me quickly add that and show you how it works. Let me create a grid custom column sizer. Let's use the helper. Right click on this, add new item, choose a class file, and name it as grid column sizer dot C sharp. Now this will be a public class file, public class which will extend the data grid column sizer. Now we have to override the on compute header cell width method of the data grid column sizer. How do we do that? Protected override double on compute cell width. By default, it returns the base compute cell width. Now in our case, if the column mapping name is experience years, we want to return some width. So how do we do that? If column dot mapping name equal to experience years, which let me copy it from here and paste it. If it is experience year, I'm going to return 500 as a column header width. Otherwise, I will return the base compute header width. Now 500 seems to be pretty big, but to distinguish the difference on the UI, I'm adding it as 500. Let me restart the application now. Notice that there's no difference in the width of this experience years header. That's because we have not added the corresponding changes in the employee grid.xaml file. What do we need to do here? We need to add this resource to this content page. How do we do that? Let me first add the namespace as XML namespace resource. Let me call it as resource or helper, whatever it is easy. For now, I will add it as resource and say namespace colon syncfusion maui app dot helper. Now we have the resource as the namespace. Now let me go here and say content page dot resources. Now we'll add this as a resource, which is resource colon. Look at that. We get the auto prompt grid custom column sizer. And then we will say x colon key. Let's define the key as 
grid custom column sizer. Let me change this. Once a key is defined, we have to apply this key to the data grid. How do we do that? Copy this key name, scroll down to the data grid over here, and under data grid, we have the property called column sizer, which I will name as column sizer is x colon resource, static resource of grid custom column sizer. That's all it is. Now let me restart the application and look at the output. Notice that the column is still off base. That's due to the column width mode is set to fit by cell. Let me change it to auto so that it applies the static grid custom column sizer. Now let me switch back to the emulator and see the output. Look at that. We have the width as 500 for experience years. Let me reduce the width so that it looks good. Let me make it to 150 over here and restart this application and look at the output. Notice that the column width has been applied to this header. Now you are well aware of changing the column widths and its sizes. Let's now switch back to the employee info and do some more changes. Now that we are done with custom column header resizing, let's assume that we have another requirement to include an active checkbox and an employee image in the employee information. To achieve that, we must first submit the photos to the CDN so that we may use the image route to display the employee image. I have been using the imagekit.io as the image CDN since the beginning of these sessions. You are welcome to use your own since I found this to be quite simple to upload and utilize. I have also sub previously submitted the images to the imagekit CDN and you just need to right click on this image path, copy the URL and utilize it in the employee information object. Let's now return to the code and add the image related data for each of our employees. Let me switch to employee info.cs file and add couple of properties to achieve our requirement. Let me add property image source and name it as employee image and let me also add property a boolean property to say whether the employee is active or not is active. Now let's switch to the employee repository and do the necessary changes and add the images over here. After the country let me add an image over here stating as employee image equal to the image URL path. I may remove this unwanted stuff and just make it as a image string over here. Let me do it for the rest of the properties. To make it quick, I have added the employee images to each of these objects. Let me switch to the for loop over here and convert these employee image URLs to the image source. How do we do that? Employee image equal to employees dot employee image. However, we need to convert this string into the image source we will say image source dot from uri of new uri is nothing but our uri path hence which will be coming from the employee image let's save this and run the application and see the output let me restart the application over here the sync fusion data grid is sophisticated enough to recognize the image source field and generate the employee image as well as to transform the is active attribute to a checkbox Syncfusion data grid allows us to disable custom column generation and build columns using the XAML file. Let's see how we can do it. Let's stop the application and let's switch to the employee grid.xaml file. The first thing to do is to turn off auto generate column. So we'll say auto generate column mode is none. Then let's let's add data grid dot sf data grid dot columns property and add the custom columns in here. Data grid of data grid text column notice that we have around seven to eight different columns predefined by data grid control we have a checkbox column we have a combo box we have a date image numeric template and text column we will be using the combination of text checkbox and image columns right now so let me start with data grid text column over here and adding the mapping name as name now let me just restart this application and see the output let me run this application now. Notice that we ha now have the name column over here and the rest of the columns are not visible. We need to manually add them one by one since the auto generate property is set to none. Let me switch back and add the rest of the columns as well. Let's add all the text columns over here which are pretty simple which are phone and country. Let me stop this application here and I will also add a checkbox column for ease active mapping name. Let me copy it from my other screen. So 
so we have the data grid text column for name phone country and is active let me arrange this properly name is active phone and country let's now bind the image how do we bind the image we just need to add data grid colon and we'll call it as data grid image column mapping name equal to employee image now let me add the gender later and let me run this application first and show you the output notice that all the columns have been added that we have mentioned over here let me arrange the employee image to the beginning of this column section and restart the application again look at that we have employee image name is active phone and country in an order i have not added the experience here so let me add that as well as a simple text column probably after the country and let me rename this as experience underscore years that's it before adding the employee gender we must understand that employee gender is a normal combo box column selection to add and update it we must first link the gender to a mapping name and then allow gender editing to enable editing we must bind the available gender so that they can be selected in edit mode so in order to do that let me switch to the employee layout view model and first add internal genders over here a property and then let's create a observable collection so that we can expose this observable collection in the XAML file called gender details. And let's bind this gender details as genders dot to observable collection in the generate source that we are doing. Now, once we have this, we can create the mapping name for the gender. Now, let me switch back to the XAML. Before that, I have done three steps. One, create internal genders string collection and then created an observable collection for gender details and make the gender details available by converting this string array to observable collection. Let me switch to the XAML file now and create a data column called for gender. So let me keep it into the second group, second column over here. Let me stop the application before we proceed. After the employee image and name, let me add the gender over here, mapping name as gender. Then it's not a data grid text column. So let's make it as data grid combo box column. And then we will bind the item source as item source equal to binding space gender details that's it and now we can run this application to see the gender is being populated look at that the gender is populated but we cannot edit this gender and see the drop down in order to accomplish that we have to enable editing for the employee grid let me switch to the xaml let me stop this application and add the properties to edit the data grid how do we do that allow editing equal to true and then we'll add other properties navigate navigation mode equal to cell and then edit tap action equal to on double tap and then we will say selection mode equal to single let's now run this application again look at that we have the employee details as well as gender when i double click on the gender you have now the option to choose a gender either male female or other let's now understand the data grid template column the data grid template column is derived from data grid column. Hence, it inherits all the properties of the data grid column. It allows you to extend the functionality of the data grid column with your own view by creating the cell templates. During our data grid editing session, we will take a deep dive into the data grid template. However, to better understand the concept of a data grid template column, let me modify the column color by adding a label to the name column. So let me change this name column over here and add data grid dot data grid template column let me choose this template column and take the header text as name mapping name is name again here then let me start writing the code as data grid colon data grid template column dot cell template now under this cell template we will have a data template and then within the stack layout let's let's add a label over here label horizontal text alignment equal to center and let me bind the name how do we bind that we will say text is binding of name now after that let's make this text color as blue this is what we can do with the customization which is very flexible with the data grid now once we close this label let me restart the application again and see the output notice that the employee name color is changed to blue with this we have successfully explored all the data grid 
data column types. Let's now focus on the freeze panes functionality of the data grid. Freeze panes is a pretty simple feature in data grid where we can freeze either rows or columns. Now we can define the frozen row count or the column count property on the data grid to freeze the panes. So let me do the frozen column count property to one and we can extend this to the number of columns minus one of the data grid. Let me save this and restart the application. Notice that the first column is frozen in the data grid. It is that simple. We can also freeze the first row of the data grid and give the scroll over here. We have limited set of items. So for now, we'll ignore that property. Grouping of columns is another great feature of Syncfusion data grid control. Let me group the columns by gender and show you the details. To group the columns, we need to create the group column descriptors as data grid colon SF data grid dot group column descriptors. Under the group column descriptors, we need to create a group column description, which is data grid colon group column description. And we need to mention the column name. Let's say the column name is gender and we'll close this group column descriptor. We can create multiple group column descriptions under the group column descriptors. Let's restart this application and see the output again. Notice that the data grid is grouped by gender. Now we can add the expand collapse options to the groups as well. So let me add the property group, allow group expand and collapse to true. That's it. Notice that we have the expand and collapse option available at the group level. With this, we have successfully understood the Sync Fusion data grid controls, column types, column sizing, custom column sizing, grouping, and free span features. We will cover the other data grid functionalities in the following session. Till then, thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.